This video will cover the Geometry Common Core exam from August 2015, questions 12 through 15. Number 12 says in the diagram shown below, AC is tangent to the circle O at A and to circle P at C. So that immediately tells us something, actually. If we have a tangent meeting a radius, tangent and a radius is always perpendicular. So here we have right angles at C and at A. OP intersects AC at B, and OA is 4, AB is 5, and PC is 10. What is the length of BC? Because I don't know what BC is, I'm going to choose to call it X. If we look at these two triangles, we also notice that vertical angles are congruent. Vertical angles are congruent. Vertical angles are just formed out of an X, and they're opposite one another. They're always congruent to each other. So if we look at these triangles, it looks like we have two sets of angles congruent. So the triangles are similar by AA. Similarity, where two sets of angles, again, are congruent. The right angles and then the vertical angles. Which means that the sides are in proportion. Which is very helpful because we can set up a proportion to help solve for BC. So let's do, say, small triangle over big triangle. You can set up the proportion in several different ways and still get the same correct answer as long as you're consistent with the proportion that you set up. So if I start with 4, that looks like a radius of the small triangle, which means that I have to use the radius of the big triangle underneath the, it in the proportion. So 4 over 10 equals 5 over x, where I have AB corresponding to BC. I'm sorry, AB corresponding to CB. So here to solve proportions, we just cross multiply. 4x equals 50. When we divide by 4, we get 12.5. Choice 3. Number 13 says, in the diagram below, which single transformation was used to map triangle A onto triangle B? So if you look here, it looks like the very right vertice of this triangle gets moved and becomes the tippy-top vertice of the triangle on B. And so it looks like we're swinging, or in other words, turning. And in order to think about a turn, we must think about a rotation. The key word for a line reflection is a flip. Rotation, of course, as we just said, is a turn. Dilation is a grow or shrink. And a tra translation is a slide. So answers for this page, we have number 12 is choice 3. And number 13 is choice 2. Number 14 says in the diagram below, triangle DEF is the image of ABC after a clockwise rotation of 180 degrees. In a dilation where, and then it lists a bunch of line segments and their measures. Which relationship must always be true? So we're going to be able to cancel out three of them, and then there's one true statement. Now this is tough to think about because normally we think about triangles that are similar have congruent angles. And sides in proportion. It's not typical to think about angles in proportion. But... It's possible to do, um, and we're going to deal with it. It's okay. Um, but you should know that we can never have a situation like 1 and 2, choices 1 and 2. Because what they're telling you here is that if you were to cross multiply, you have 2 times the measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle D. Which is not true. That's telling you that you have different angle measures with corresponding angles. But we just said that corresponding angles are congruent. So the same situation occurs in choice 2. You have 2 times the measure of angle F is equal to the measure of angle C. Again, not true because angles are congruent. In order to decide between choices 3 and 4, I think we should do a little bit of prep work on our triangles. We know that DEF is the image of ABC, meaning A corresponds to D, just as I already have circled on here, and B corresponds to E, so I'm putting squares around them. And C, we'll do a little cloud, corresponds to F. 
So what we know is that angle B should be congruent to angle E. Angle A is congruent to angle D. And then, of course, C is congruent to F. So when we look through these choices 3 and 4, we have to make sure that they set up the proportion consistently. So if they go, say, small triangle over big triangle for the first side of the proportion, they should also have the same thing on the left side. Small triangle over big triangle. They don't have to go small over big. They could do small with small, big with big, as long as they're being consistent with the sides that they choose. Or the angles, rather, in this case. So here we start with measure of angle A over the measure of angle C. So it looks like we go circle to cloud. Measure of angle A to measure of angle C. Circle to cloud. And then on the other side, we have a cloud and then circle. Because F, remember, we put a cloud around it. And D, we put a circle. These guys, when they set up this choice, choice 3, they were not consistent. If they were consistent, we should have had circle over cloud. Or cloud over circle for both sides of the proportion, both fractions. Now if we look at choice 4, we have B, which got a square, over E, which got a square. So it looks like this one they went with small triangle over big triangle for the left side of the proportion. So let's see if the right side also goes small triangle over big triangle. C had a cloud and F had a cloud. Meaning again, cloud squares, circles, mean that they correspond with each other and are therefore congruent. So choice 4 is our answer for number 14. Number 15 says, in the diagram below, quadrilateral ABCD is inscribed in circle P. What is the measure of angle ADC? So A to D to C, that's right here. I'm going to choose to call it X because I don't know yet what it is. When I look at inscribed angles, we know that they are half, ah, half the measure of the arc, meaning an inscribed angle equals the arc divided by 2. So if I know that this inscribed angle B is 72 degrees, then the arc that it opens up to, arc ADC over 2. So if I put 72 over 1, I can cross multiply. So then I know that the measure of arc ADC is equal to 144. So this arc out here is 144 degrees. I'm just marking up what I know based on the diagram, and then hopefully that will help me find the measure of x. Now, I could also use this inscribed angle of 110, but that will give me overlapping arcs, and I don't feel like that would be helpful. Because what I notice is that x is also an inscribed angle. So if I look at the arc that x opens up to, or my angle ADC, that opens up to an arc ABC. And of course, that angle X is the measure of the arc over 2. And if I look at where I marked my arcs, I have the blue arc meeting the green arc. And together, they go in a full circle. So I know that the blue arc plus this green arc should be equal to 360. So I can find out the green arc and then find out the measure of angle X by doing 144 plus, we'll call it, say, Y, equals 360. So I'm going to subtract 144, and we get 216. Y equals 216. So now I know that the green arc is 216. So now I have X equals 216 divided by 2. So then X equals 108 degrees. Again, the main thing you have to understand here is that an inscribed angle is half of the arc's measure. So inscribed angle touches the edge of the circle. It's an on angle, meaning it's on the edge of the circle, and it's half of its arc. So if the arc is 2x, then the angle is x. If the arc is 4x, then the angle 
is 2x. It's half of its measure. Our answers for this page are 4 for 14 and 3 for 15.